based on a Stephen King novel Stanley Kubrick threw in the trash, comes an iconic piece of horror cinema. Here's Johnny! That was probably scary before it got parodied to death. Here's Annie! Here's Larry! Here's Clowny! Here's Ozzy! Here's Heifer! Here's Johnny! Don't! Oh. The Shining. Sit back way back for two and a half hours of Kubrick's signature style that's either a masterclass in building tension or kind of boring in a film that's largely made out of the same three shots characters staring at the camera Characters pulling a crazy face. Or characters wandering around. But hey, Everything feels creepy when you put that score under it. God. <laughs> oh, it's just you, Wednesday. Journey to the Overlook, an empty hotel on top of an Indian burial ground with a long history of murder. So, like a nice Motel 6. Cozy. And settle in with the winter caretaker, Jack Nicoltorens, who in the book is a loving family man who slowly goes mad over the course of the season as the dark secrets of the Overlook are revealed. Come and play with us. Except in this movie, he never really liked his family. I'm hungry. Why well, you should've eaten your breakfast. He goes crazy over the course of about a week. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. And the dark secrets of the Overlook were part of the job interview. He killed his family with an ax. Wow. But Jack needs some time and space to write, damn it. And he'll take all the dark paranormal energy he can get if it lets him procrastinate on his novel even more. Hmm, I could finish this chapter, or I could kill my whole family. Then I'll write two chapters, honest, I swear. Jack's not alone in this haunted house. There's Shelley Duvall's Wendy, a woman living in growing fear of her abuser, Stanley Kubrick. Well, I don't sympathize with Shelley. Little Danny Torrens, who shows you don't need fancy CGI to pull a golem. Danny's not here, Mrs. Torrens. And Dick Halloran, a cook with The Shining, a psychic talent that's kind of useless if he couldn't see this coming. <laughs> Guy got an axe to the chest after flying coach from Miami to Denver? That's like dying twice. Experience this complex and baffling masterpiece that could be an allegory for anything. The treatment of Native Americans, alcoholism, fate versus free will, alienation, writer's block, Theseus and the Minotaur, the Illuminati, it's all a dream, Kubrick's confession for faking the moon landing, <sighs> MK Ultra, they're in hell and Jack is the devil, the Holocaust, the patriarchy, the destruction of Kubrick's old neighborhood, a warning about staying in the bath too long, or the importance of regular snowcat maintenance. There we go, that's the one. We cracked the code, you guys. We can stop overthinking it. Check your snowcat. So immerse yourself in horror that breaks all the rules of today. No big shock moments, no elaborate backstories or explanations, and no unstoppable monsters. Just a sad dad who's killed by the wrong choice of jacket. Imagine this came out today. 100% chance this trailer has a weird minor key version of Let It Snow. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Starring. Cut my wife into pieces. This is a ghost resort. Sir, this is a Wendy. My little Tony. Friendship is magic. Groundskeeper Chili. Blood in an elevator. Hotel Motel. Homicide in. The Grady Bunch. The Grady Bunch. Furcon 1980. And don't stay in the bath too long or you'll wrinkle up. So I married an axe murderer. They changed so much from the book, they really should have just let Stephen King have complete control. If you want something done right, you ought to do it yourself. Oh! 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 What the hell? 
Cocaine is a hell of a drug.